Hi everyone, I am Niharika Krishnan and today we will be talking about what happens behind the scenes of spell checks. So before we get started, a little bit about me. I am a machine learning engineer at TCS in India where I work on building chatbots using natural language processing. Off work, I contribute to the Python tech community as a speaker, mentor and also by organizing the PyLadies Chennai meetups. Um, with that, let's get started with spell checks. So what really is a spell check? It, it corrects, it's a functionality which detects and uh, spelling errors and possibly suggests alternatives. And based on the best alternative, uh, you have an autocorrector which automatically replaces the wrong spelling, right? So there are different algorithms which govern this spell check functionality and we will be going through each such algorithm and uh, understanding uh, how they differ and understanding where to use what. So a spell check is something which is very, uh, which, which is part of the natural language processing pipeline. It falls under the data pre-processing and you will find use cases everywhere, be it your mails. So this is just a small stat that uh, there were around 269 billion emails which were sent in the year 2019, which averages out to around 20 mails a day. And I think uh, during this COVID situation, this number is much, much higher. Imagine you face a situation like this, right? So you will also find spell checks in search engines, in recommendation when you're making a, a spelling mistake in your doc or even in chatbots. So these are all the places including text mining and all of it where spell check is very crucial and integral. There are Python packages already like spy, spell checker, text blob, NLTK, which already have uh, functionalities like the correct function or the unknown function. So it is a, spell checker object or the edit distance function where you need to give the strings and it corrects it for you. But there are these algorithms which depend on edit distance which runs behind and we will understand how it changes CMPUTR and how it is able to detect the word computer out of that, right? So what happens behind the scenes? So this is a concept which is known as edit distance where it is basically it quantifies how dissimilar two strings are. So to take an example, you have the word intention and execution, and you have different operations like insertion, deletion, substitution, and transposition. So to convert this word intention to execution, as you can see, there are almost five operations which are required. So the edit distance for this is five. So based on these four operations and the permutation and combination of using these four operations, different algorithms work. And so the first algorithm which we're going to look into today is the Levenstein, which is working on the insertion, deletion, and substitution, followed by the Demerol Levenstein, and then the least common subsequent. So the difference between the first and the second is the, the uh, operation, which is transposition. So to take an example for the first one, you have two words, which is receive and receive, which is IE and EI. This is a very common mistake, which we do uh, all of us, right? So the edit distance that is to convert uh, the wrong one to the correct receive is two. But the same edit distance for the same two operations, you can also convert it to the word receipt, R-E-C-E-I-P-T. So these two are very different semantically and they're used in very different contexts, right? So this is a small drawback with the Levenstein algorithm. And to correct this is uh, where we have another one which is called as demerol levenstein which also includes the operation of transposition. So transposition is something where you do character swapping. And so this has a much higher um, uh, probability and accuracy. Uh, another one which is used is called the least common subsequence, which only takes into account an insertion or deletion. Just to see how this works and how they differentiate, let's take an example of kitten, which needs to be moved and converted to the word sitting. So the Levenstein algorithm is the one which is on the left and the LCS is the one which is on the right. And as you can see, it takes three operations and the one LCS takes five operations. So um, Levenstein is definitely a much uh, better approach, but it is again depending on your use case as to whether you would like to go ahead with LCS or with respect to Levenstein. So another few algorithms which you need to take into account is Hamming distance, Jaro, and Jaro Winkler. Hamming distance only focuses on substitution. So if you have a use case where both the strings are same, and then you would want to see how dissimilar they are. That is when they are of the same length. So you can definitely use Hamming distance. Jaro and Jaro Rinkler are pretty amazing when you have multiple words. So when you have two or three words and you want to 
uh, see their similarity uh, just by using edit distance functionality. Uh, it uses only transposition and matching characters. So insertion and uh, deletion, there are, there are a lot of operations which take place. So when you only talk about transposition and when you talk about matching characters, you get a range of 0 to 1. So 0 is the least similar and 1 becomes the most similar strings. So uh, you get this probability and based on that you can decide. Jaro Winkler is an enhancement to Jaro where it also takes into account the prefix. So if you have a use case for example where you need to autofill or, uh, or you have your start menu and you are typing an application name and it predicts the probable application names. That's where your prefix remains the same. So that is taken into account and Jaro Winkler works amazing there. So there is a package called Jellyfish and there are multiple other packages also where you can just call these functions, uh, these algorithms and give the two strings and give you the output. So the first three give you the edit distance as your output and the, the last two which is Jaro and Jaro Winkler give you the, uh, the similarity ratio between you know, 0 to 1. But this is something, this algorithm which has recently come which is symmetric delete spelling correction by a person called Wolf Garb beats all of them and it's 1 million times faster. How does that happen? So SimSpell which is actually the package which uses this algorithm uses only the concept of deletion. So uh, it has a frequency dictionary and that is a frequency dictionary which you can build based on the corpus. It contains words and the relevant uh, times it has occurred in that corpus that there's a number of times. So what it does is it doesn't just operate on the input entry, it also operates on the frequency dictionary. So if you have functions like insertion, deletion and substitution, it does delete on both. So if you have, just to give you one small example, if you have uh, insertion function and you are given the input entry as GOA, so you can, uh, it deletes a dictionary entry from uh, which has proper words like GOAL if you, if you have an added distance of 1 and you delete it. So that basically gives you the word GOA and it matches. So this is how symmetric uh, SimSpell works. So instead of generating 3 million possibilities, if you have a five letter word, it generates only 25 possibilities and then you get to choose the best one out of it. So when you take the example of substitution and transposition, um, it does deletion on both, on the input and as well as the dictionary. So if you see it will delete one character from here and it will also delete one character from here. So the K goes out and the L goes out and then you equate GOA with GOA. So you do get suggestions like GOAL and GOAT are probable suggestive spellings of the spelling error which is GOAK, right? So here's just a small brief as to how SimSpell, uh, you can invoke it and you can work it. All three main things which you need to do is load the frequency dictionary and you need to give the edit distance uh, length where, uh, which determines how many operations you are able to uh, do on the dictionary. And then you have two functions which is the lookup function and the lookup compound. Lookup is when you have one word and lookup compound is when you have a string of words, uh, when you have a lot of words, right? And so this helps in word segmentation. All you need to do is give the input term, give the verbosity which is do you want the top suggestion, the closest suggestion or all suggestions and you also need to give the edit distance. So be it 1, 2 or 3. Based on that it will give you the suggestion to terms and the distance and the count that is a frequency count. So these are the two functionalities and there is another which is word segmentation which you can leverage and it has helped us in our use cases so far and I hope it helps you too. So if you would like to explore further on this spell check, um, feel free to connect and thank you.